All right, go-to techniques. So after every comp workshop, this is what students find most useful. And I apologise to any of my own students who are listening that you have to hear me go through this again, although there's no harm done in hearing this a second time. What I'm framing here is when you're in the exam and you're looking at that poem and you're thinking, my goodness, I cannot find the metaphors, I can't find the motifs, what am I going to do, what am I going to say? These techniques are your go-to techniques. They're always going to be relevant in the text that you have studied. One year, everyone became obsessed with the, one of the acronyms, which was M for modality. And I had all these boys writing about modality in every single text that they were looking at. The takeaway though, is you can't just throw the technique at the text. You still have to substantiate the technique you've identified with some sort of analysis. So the go-to techniques are there, but you still have to explain that correlation, the causal relationship between the technique and the actual quote that you're using. So fall back on them, but make sure you can actually justify that they are there in the text. That's the point. So how I've organized these acronyms is I've got one set of acronyms, go-to techniques for visual texts, then one set for fictional texts, and then one set for non-fiction texts. And I've created the acronyms in a way that they're kind of easy to memorize. And for example, when you're in an exam and you're looking at a visual and we'll go through our first acronym, SSP, you can note down SSP on the visual and have a quick little brainstorm of what each of those letters represented and it will help you navigate your way through. Go-to techniques, visual texts. First one is SSP. S is for salience. S is for salience, note that down. Salience is the focal point in the image. So, Whenever we're talking about an image, by the way, always refer to the border as the frame, within the frame. So in this visual, our point of salience, where my eye is drawn, is my black dot. When you identify something as salient, you need to unpack how that focal point has been rendered salient. So within salience, there are a few sub points that you want to note down. The first one is composition. So salience, subpoint, composition. Within this visual, the composition has the black dot as central to the frame, which enhances its salient position. We might want to consider the volume of the focal point. If it occupies a large portion of the frame, that may also contribute to the point of salience. There may be a vector line within the visual that draws us to that point of salience. So, so far we have salience and then subpoint composition, subpoint volume, subpoint vector lines. Vector lines are the lines the eye follows to enter the frame. We might want to think about what's in the foreground versus background within the composition. We might want to think about contrast, right? The fact that it's black against white. And contrast is also referred to in particularly black and white images as chiaroscuro. So contrast, and then within that, chiaroscuro, C-H-I-A-R-O-S-C-U-R-O. -R our second S is symbolism. So once we've identified what our point of salience is in the visual, we then might want to consider, is there a symbolic value that I can attribute to that point of salience? For example, if we're looking at a visual and a focal point in the visual is a crucifix, okay? That might symbolize faith or religion. When you're considering symbolism, you might also want to consider the setting. Where are we actually placed in this visual? How does that connote? certain symbolic values. For example, a beach being within nature might symbolize purity or freedom. A classroom might symbolize institutionalism for some or knowledge for others. So think about that. In addition to symbolism, you can also consider the phrase metonym, M-E-T-O-N-Y-M. A metonym is an object or a word that stands for a larger concept or idea. For example, red, a red light, is a metonym for stop. A crucifix 
is a metonym for Christianity, right? So these are symbols that literally stand for another idea. They're so closely interlinked that they almost replace that other idea. And lastly, we want to consider perspective. You're asking yourself from whose perspective do we enter this frame? Are we looking upwards towards an object to the extent that it idolizes that object? Are we looking downwards to the extent that it diminishes the value of what we're looking at? I've seen lots of visuals where the person who is, where it's a photograph, where the person taking the photograph is holding the hand of someone within the visual, right? So you actually see their hand extending into the frame. The effect of that is that we're drawn very directly into the frame to the extent that we experience the human experience of the visual vicariously. Your parents might vicariously be experiencing your HSC through you if they're listening in on the workshop today.